Oh, howdy all, grab yourselves a beer, it is time for some Path of Excel discussion. In fact, maybe grab yourself too, because we're going to be talking about statistics. Now, today there was a really interesting thread that went up on Reddit. Uh, a Twitch streamer, and I'm only going to have one attempt at pronouncing this name, uh, Zelzixina, maybe? Uh, anyways, Twitch streamer that has put out a fantastic little uh, spreadsheet showing everything that they pulled from 20,000 stack decks that they opened. Anyway... Uh, stack ticks are an item that give a random divination card, but with somewhat of a bias towards getting better ones. Now that doesn't mean that you know you're going to open House of Mirrors more often than you open uh, something low value like, uh, say, the one for 40 Wisdom Scrolls. Uh, you will instead find that the bias against getting the rarest divination cards is lessened when you're opening cards from stack decks. Anyway. Uh, it's been a long debated question in the Path of Exile community as to what you should do with stack decks, whether you should sell them or whether you should crack them yourself. And I wanted to take a look at some of the numbers and what the numbers really say about the question. So, uh, our Twitch streamer in question has opened 20,000 stack decks. I think most people will look at that and say, hey, that's a huge sample size. You'll be able to pin down exactly what the expected value is. And actually, that's not the case. Uh, 20,000 is not nearly a large enough sample size, and we'll get to that later, but essentially I cannot tell the difference between, because uh, the, in the 20,000 stack decks there were zero copies of the divination card The Demon, which is one of the biggest value divination cards in the game. Uh, now, it is actually quite reasonable. In fact, there is a 10% chance that the probability of The Demon dropping is less than 1 in 8,000. So if it was 1 in 8,000, you would expect that when you open 20,000 decks that you would hit 2.5 of them on average. However, the possibility of getting exactly zero is still considerable uh, with, an average, with an expected value of 2.5. And so this means that there are huge, huge, huge error, mar barge, error margins on some of the individual cards that have come up. And some of the cards contribute a huge amount to the amount of value that you get out of your stack decks. So to take the most extreme example, let's jump down to House of Mirrors. There was one that was opened on the Twitch stream out of 20,000 divination cards. And this card was worth 6,700 chaos orbs approximately. So what would have happened to the conclusion uh, that was drawn had there been two House of Mirrors that dropped or had there been zero? Suddenly, because the total value of all of the cards that dropped was 62,800 chaos, it would actually make a 10% difference if just through a different stroke of luck, you got zero House of Mirrors or you got two of them. And having only one hit gives you very little information to go on. The way that I made some, uh, some attempt to model this is through using the Poisson distribution. What this is, it's a probability density function that exists as a way to to estimate from limited information what the probability of an event actually is, uh, and to put some actual hard numerical boundaries on that. And so, for each of the divination cards that, uh, uh, for each of the divination cards that was opened in this, in fact, for each divination card that exists in the game, uh, I produced a spreadsheet that looked into the minimum realistic number of that. Uh, of that divination card that could be expected to be pulled and the maximum that could be expected to be pulled. Now, you can't actually say in probability a hard maximum or minimum. And what I did was I used a curve where you cut off the top 10% and the bottom 10%, which is a much looser definition than would usually be used by, say, for instance, uh, people conducting opinion polling in an election. However, the reason that, I've, that I did it this way is because if I were to extend out to the sort of more typical 95% confidence interval, then the data starts to lose meaning. Instead of saying that the number expected of demons was between 0 and 2.3, instead it would be between 0 and 3.89. Uh, and that starts to become a massive source of, a source of variance. Anyways, to cut the numbers short, the total value of divination cards that was actually looted, uh, you can see down here, was 62,858 chaos. Taking the unlucky roll, 
the total value that could be expected is 33,375 chaos. Notice that that's only half as much. And if we were to take the highest plausible roll, are you looking at 128,721? So actually, the only conclusion that I can really draw is that it is almost certain that the expected value for a stacked deck is more than 1.6 chaos and is less than 6.1 chaos at the moment. 1.6 to 6.1 is a huge range. And as a result, I think people will probably continue to trade for them, but to purchase them in trade around the 3, 3.5 chaos barrier that, uh, will, that a lot of people will believe that because, uh, because on the Twitch stream, they, the average was about 3.15 chaos, they're going to believe that 3.15 chaos is actually a really firm number. However, I did a little bit of other analysis, and this was based upon the relative frequency of various divination cards. So rather than looking at the total value that comes up, what I did was I looked at some of the low value divination cards. So Reign of Chaos is a divination card that is one eighth of a Chaos Orb. 753 of them dropped. You can actually tell quite a lot from a Poisson estimate or also uh, from other various estimates with the, bino uh, with the uh, binomial expansion actually get quite a tight bound on what the probability of hitting a reign of chaos is because you've got a large sample size there 753 hits 19,247 misses is actually a very large sample size that can put quite a firm boundary on that probability and I w uh, and to give a bit of a, a number on that you could say that you are very, very unlikely to get less than 600, if you were to repeat this experiment, to get less than 675, or to get more than 830, Reign of Chaos, would be extremely unlikely. And when I say extremely unlikely, I mean not, not like uh, 1 in 10 odds, but more 1 in 100 odds. So it's possible. If we were to extend a little bit further, and instead of saying... Uh, one in 675 to one in 830, we extended that by another 25 each way, we'd be starting to look at almost lottery odds of, ever, of seeing Reign of Chaos numbers that are outside of that range. So, this can give us some information on how exactly stack decks are coded. There's a number of divination cards that all give Chaos Orbs. And what I've done is I've taken the cards that give Chaos Orbs and Exalted Orbs. Uh, don't pay attention to the currency weighting column as yet. Uh, we'll come back to that in a sec. And the number of them that popped up. And I've come up with a bit of a model that gives me a sense as to how exactly I think the stack deck works in the current state of the game. So, what I've done is I've converted for an... I've gone under the assumption that... A divination card that gives five chaos orbs on average. So chaotic disposition is a set of one and it grants you five chaos orbs when you hit it, when you turn it in. The Roth is a set of eight that gives you 10 chaos orbs. That means you can think of each copy of the Roth as being one, uh, one and one quarter chaos orbs. Three feces in the dark is three sevenths of a chaos orb and reign of chaos is one eighth of a chaos orb. So, You'll notice that these, div uh, that these divination cards get noticeably more common. So Chaotic Disposition dropped uh, 72 times, The Wrath dropped 119 times, Three Faces in the Dark 264, and Reign of Chaos dropped 753 times. However, you'll also notice that this is not in proportion to the actual rarity of the cards. So, uh, to take, for instance, the Roth is 10 times the value of Reign of Chaos. And that's not just a player set value on those cards. That's a really clear hard-coded into the game uh, value difference. The Roth is a set of 8 for 10 Chaos Orbs. Reign of Chaos is a set of 8 for 1. It is definitely 10 times the value. However, the quantity that is seen uh, is approximately 6 and a quarter times as many. So what I did was I posed the question, what type of uh, weighting modeling would actually fit all of these values? And the time I was thinking about this, I forgot that the card chaotic disposition existed. So let's just pretend that this line's not here. Uh, and I then thought, well, we've got chaos orbs. We've got three cards that give chaos orbs. We also have four cards that give exalted orbs. We have a luring bounty, which is a set of seven that gives a, a 10 exalted orbs. 
We have Abandoned Wealth, which is a set of five cards that gives three Exalted Odds. We have the Saint's Treasure, which is a set of ten cards, which gives two Exalts. And we have the Hoarder, which is a set of twelve cards, which gives one. And we had various numbers of those, so I plugged them in. The other thing that I was able to find, and this is where the currency weighting kicks in, some years ago, data, uh, drop information was data mined from the game files. So this means that people were able to actually read the data as to exactly how drops worked. And these are the figures that exist still on the uh, GGG official forums. I can't vouch for these, uh, other than that I personally believe them, but I don't know that they're correct. They do match up with the experience of uh, Slippery Jim, who recently did 10,000 burial chambers uh, and recorded all of his results online. And you'll notice here that for every one mirror of Calandra that drops up, well, 30 Eternal Orbs, that shows you how long ago this, this information was data mined. Eternal Orbs haven't dropped for a very long time. But for every one mirror, there's 1,000 Divine Orbs that drop, 1,600 Exalts. That fits my experience. Divine Orbs feel rarer than Exalts. Uh, and in terms of raw currency drops, uh, Divine Orbs you get more of because uh, you can vendor six links, especially Tabula Rasa, and also because they're just not as uh, in demand, and therefore when you get one, uh, when you get an exalt, it's more memorable. It sticks in your mind. So you therefore think about it. You don't forget exalt drops, whereas you often forget Divine Drops. Regal Orbs are very rare as drops, uh, which matches my experience. Uh, but then for every Exalted Orb, you get 30 Chaos Orbs. That was the key figure, that's, uh, the sort of the key information that I wanted to take out of this and put into this spreadsheet. So, if it was the case that Divination cards respected the relative rarity of the currency involved, so that would mean that Divination cards for Chaos Orbs would be 30 times as rare as, as they would be if they were for Exalts instead, this made me think, what type of formula would fit, uh, the, it would fit all of the data that was observed in the Twitch streamers uh, looting? And the formula that I came up with is that the, is that the weighting of the divination card uh, is based upon the value, of, is the currency weighting divided by the actual value of the number of the currency that it's equivalent to. So, for instance, uh, the hoarder would be 19,200, so 1,600 divided by 1 12th. This would be 8,000, uh, and you can see these numbers over here, projected weighting. Uh, abandoned wealth would be 1,600 divided by 0 0.6. Alluring bounty would be 1,600 divided by 10 sevenths. Uh, and so on for the chaos orbs as well. And so I projected what the weighting of the divination card might be and tried to create a formula that fit, in, uh, that fit this, that sort of turned this data into something reasonably similar to this. And what I came up with was a very simple formula, which is the projected weighting raised to the power of 0 0.8. Uh, so this is, the, this is take the number and then slightly decrease how quickly it grows. And this is how I believe that stacked X work. I could be wrong on this front. And this, was a, this line is simply a measure of how accurately it fits. Uh, these numbers should be as close to each other as possible. And you can see they're sort of close, uh, with the exception of Alluring Bounty and Chaotic Disposition. All the rest of them are very close to one. So for that reason, uh, my suspicion is that that is actually the formula for stacked X, that they're the that they respect the weighting of the divination card, but raised to the power 0 0.8, which then decreases the probability of getting something like the Gambler that is a very common divination card, or the Reign of Chaos. However, what was interesting was that I looked up some previous Twitch streamers who had turned in 10,000 divination cards, and noticed that they had been getting less Reign of Chaos uh, than is appearing now. They got more of the higher value divination cards. So I also suspect that there has been a, an undocumented nerf to the way that stack decks work. Uh, this doesn't necessarily make them awful low because a number of very, 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 uh, very, very, very high value divination cards have been added in recent leagues, uh, such as the Cheetah, which is a divination card that was added in 3.10, a set of three from memory that turns in for an awakened support gem, 20 quality and level six, gem level six. 
uh, this divination card is almost a thousand chaos orbs at the moment. Anyway, so in conclusion, uh, what should the if, what should the expected value of a stack deck be? Uh, the vast majority, the vast majority of the currency that comes out of stack decks comes from a very small percentage of stack decks, and I want to really show that off by saying, let's have a look at the stack decks. Uh, let's sort them to be in descending descending value of the divination card. So you know, House of Mirrors and the like at the top. Uh, actually, now let's sort them a different way. Let's sort them by sort them descending by the total value of the cards that was opened. What you will notice is that uh, these divination cards at the top, from Lord of Celebration and upwards, accounted for forty six thousand of the chaos orbs that were looted by our Twitch streamer here out of sixty two thousand. So three quarters of the value. How many divination cards are we talking about here? We're talking about 360. So 1.8% of the stack decks that were opened contained 75% of the total value. Let that sink in for a little. This is not like playing uh, you know, triple or nothing roulette where two thirds of the time you get nothing, one third of the time, or a little bit less than one third because the casino will rip you off a bit, but a little bit less than one third of the time you'll triple your money. This is very much chasing a jackpot. 92% of stack decks will make a big loss as a result of, uh, as a result of this information. Uh, and that's something that you want to keep in mind if you're ever thinking of opening any quantity of them. However, uh, they can be fun, and the possibility of getting a massive hit like a House of Mirrors is certainly there. It's not zero, but because it's so rare, a sample size of 20,000 is not large enough to really, analyze, uh, to really tell all that much. So ultimately, in conclusion, uh, the value of a stack deck is somewhere between 1.6 and 6.1 chaos in the current league. Uh, it's impossible to tell more than that, and the, uh, anyone that says they can tell more than that is just basically not following statistical best practice. Uh, you can open your stack decks if you want, or sell them in bulk. Don't sell them as ones, uh, and also don't sell them, oh sorry, don't open them unless you're intending to sell off any divination cards that you get that are in that sort of top 2% range. So if you were to say open an alluring bounty, you need to be confident that you can sell that for full value. If you're not confident you can do that, then you should just sell the stack decks. If you are confident that if you got an alluring bounty or some other semi jackpot card like that, or a nurse or something great, that you'd be able to turn around and find a buyer for it and get fair price and not get scammed, then yeah, by all means, open them if you want. Uh, but it is simply impossible to tell the exact value of these stack decks. If anyone's got any comments or questions, so definitely fire away below, uh, and I'm going to leave it there. I hope you have a good one.